All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the circuit construction kit for direct current on the SET Interactive Simulations website. So we'll go ahead and launch that. As usual, in general, with uh, computer science, we want to follow the acronym RAS, read all the screen. So what can we do? We can either do intro or lab. Let's start with intro. And if you look down here, we can also switch it over to lab, which really the only difference is they give us some I guess a little bit more choices over here, and then we have this advanced option down here that allows us to toggle the wire resistivity, which there's actually a whole separate simulation about resistivity if you wanted to explore that. And then the internal resistance of the battery, which they have right now set to tiny, so we can think about that also. All right, so with a circuit, we need a circle, right? It has to be a complete circle. Every circuit needs some source of energy. So that's going to be a battery here. Now note that if we read all the screen, we can see that we can toggle over to a circuit symbol. This is the symbol for a source of EMF or electromotive force. It's voltage, it's energy per charge. You can think about charges flowing around a circuit that once they get to the source of EMF, they get re-energized. And so this is putting joules of energy per unit charge. Let's be very clear about that. Spell that all out for ourselves. So remember that every circuit is going to have some source of energy, some EMF. The EMF converts other forms of energy into electrical energy. So this is sort of where we're putting the electrical energy into our circuit. And so EMF is voltage. But it's the kind of voltage that is converting other forms of energy into electrical energy. And it's the amount of energy, like nine joules per Coulomb of charge. And so that would be like a nine volt battery. So it's the amount of energy per unit charge. As unit charge flows around the circuit, it gets energized in the EMF. So remember that. All right, let's start building our circuit with some wires now. So it's always good to have a switch in our circuit. This way we can close it or open it. So switch is closed or open. So it's just like a wire, but there's a convenient way to sort of break the circuit open. It's like when you hit a light switch, you're either turning the lights on or breaking the circuit open to turn them off. Resistors resist the flow of charge. And so if we resist the flow of charge and current flows through a resistor, then the current times the resistance is going to equal the voltage that sort of drops across the resistor. So if I put nine volts into my circuit and then i have a resistor in my circuit which maybe i could uh can i move it any way around or sort of put it that way <clears throat> when i um move charge through my resistor there's going to be a voltage drop across that resistor that's going to be equal to the intensity of the current I times the value of this resistor. So let's say this was a 10 ohm resistor. If I had um, one amp of current flowing through the circuit, then one amp of current times my 10 ohms of resistance would equal 10 volts. Okay. So let's just say that, forget that nine volt battery, that was a 10 volt battery. Okay. Well, then that's like saying it's going to energize every Coulomb of charge, 10 joules per Coulomb charge. And when those uh, charges get here, they're going to be a voltage drop across this. So there's going to be um, a potential difference. So the voltage at a resistor, we use sort of the terminology PD, potential difference. The EMF is voltage. It's converting other forms of energy into electrical energy, and it's energy per charge. But at the resistors, that's where we're going to convert the electrical energy into some other form. And a resistor would convert it into heat. Or we could have made this um, a filament lamp. All right, so that has some resistance in it. So if we, let's say, connected uh, the outer, we disconnect everything now. We want to get rid of this. So.
cut that out of there. Cut. Half circuit element at half, half. Okay, and look, you can't actually change the resistance of this filament lamp, how many ohms it is. Let's see if we take that out, take that out. So this is our switch. All right. So a wire is designed just to sort of not uh, not have very much resistance at all, right? So the charges can sort of freely flow through. Let's say we have our charges that are going, um, they're going to be pushed from negative to positive. You can see up here it says show the current. So once I actually connect my circuit, we'll be able to see that. And you'd have either the way that the electrons are flowing around the circuit being pushed by the negative terminal of the battery sort of around the circuit this way, but conventional current sort of flows the other way. So let's finish building a circuit. Let's just build a simple one that has a switch, a source of EMF, give ourselves a light bulb here. And we'll connect that back like this. All right. And note how the light bulb starts shining. You see that the electrons are getting energized in the source of EMF. So they're gaining some energy per charge. As the charge goes through the resistor here in the filament lamp, it's resisting the flow of charge. And it's converting the electrical energy into heat energy. And it is an incandescent light source, right? So it glows so hot that it, uh, it shines. Um, it gets so hot that it glows, that it shines. Right? And so we see that the circuit is working. Now, this is what's showing the actual electrons sort of moving. What if I broke that circuit open? Note that it immediately stops, the light stops shining, right? Close the switch, that's like flipping the switch, the light goes on. Here's the direction of conventional current. And indeed, that's just a convention that was adopted before the electron was discovered. Once the electron was discovered, it was known that, okay, well, the electrons are being sort of pushed the other way. So it doesn't really matter as long as you have a complete circuit, you can consider, you know, conventional current going this way, or the electron is moving the other way. I kind of prefer to think about what's going on in reality, not just some convention we've adopted there. In any case, you could explore by putting other light bulbs in series with it, um, resistors. It looks like you can do things with a pencil, a hand, a dog, okay. So feel free to explore all of the sort of physics that you'd like here. What if I connected this, this, disconnect that part of it. So I've connected these two light bulbs now in series. And I'll connect my circuit, close the switch. Two light bulbs shining. Note that they're not shining as brightly as when I just had a single light bulb. Well, that's because I have the same EMF. And now remember the voltage drops across each one of these resistors, the resistor in the, the filament there. So this really gets to Kirchhoff's second law, which says that the sum of the EMF, which here we just have one source of EMF, is gonna equal the sum of the potential differences. And so there's a potential difference for a voltage drop across this filament lamp equal to IR. And there's a voltage drop across the second filament lamp also equal to IR. Well, those two voltages have to equal the volts we started with. So in this situation, each one of these lamps would drop five volts across such that the sum of the potential differences is equal to the sum of the EMFs. Now, in reality, the battery itself isn't going to perfectly convert its chemical energy into electrical energy. So remember, EMF converts other forms into electrical. If it's a battery, then that's chemical energy into electrical. So to be a little bit more realistic, we could take a look at increasing the battery resistance. What effect is that going to have? Take a look at the brightness of the lamps as I adjust the battery's resistance. If the battery itself has some resistance, then there's going to be some lost volts. 
So with internal resistance in a battery, you actually have a situation where the terminal PD, the potential difference that's sort of available at the terminal end, is available to the external circuit, is going to be equal to the EMF, but minus the current that's being drawn from the battery times its internal resistance. So remember how V equals IR is an equation for voltage, current times resistance. Well, internal resistance of a battery, we use lowercase r. So as we draw current from a battery and that current is driven through the battery itself, we're always gonna lose some volts due to the internal resistance of the battery. When it's tiny, it might be negligible, right? Which is why we could sort of drop this all the way down and say, well, it's really just sort of so low, it might as well be zero. But if there's a lot of resistance in the battery, then we will always wanna be mindful that we might have a 10 volt EMF source but if say we're drawing, if we've set up an arrangement of resistors such that we're drawing two amps of current from it and the internal resistance of our battery is high, let's say it's all the way up to uh, you know, two or something. Let's say it's at two ohms. That's a bad looking omega, two ohms. Then I'm losing two times two or four volts, four lost volts. And so the terminal PD would only be six. And so I'd only have six volts available to the external circuit, which is why when the battery resistance is high, the brightness of the lamps goes down because there's less volts sort of available to those external resistors in the filament. Now, what if we take one of our lamps, trash it, bring this guy over here. Um, well, I thought I should connect it like that. Let's get another wire and connect it like here, here. All right, so we're building a cool electric man with battery feet and hands raised in the air. Why would we want to do that? Well, because what we're actually going to do is put two light bulbs in parallel. So you kind of see that. Now these things are in parallel. You can kind of show it like that. So here's you know, one path for electrons to flow through just like this. But then there's another path where once they get to this node, they could go through this other sort of battery like that. So here would be an example of a parallel circuit with two batteries in parallel. What do you think is going to happen when I close the switch? They both shine with a certain brightness. <clears throat> Let's forget about the battery resistance. Now, note if there is no battery resistance, um, when I had two light bulbs connected in series, Let's remind ourselves what that looks like and compare it to these two light bulbs connected in parallel. So here I've got the same battery, got my light bulb here, I connect another light bulb just in series with it so that there's one path for the electrons to flow through. But in the, the one on the left, note that there's two paths, there's two loops for electrons to flow through. Take a look at the brightness of these. Note that there's no switch in this one either. So let's kind of you know, give it the ability to turn one off. You know, this one can turn off. This one just, you know, we have to disconnect it. When the charges flow through each um, resistor in the filament lamp in a series circuit, remember the voltage drops across each one of these. And so V equals IR, but the current is the same everywhere in the series circuit. Current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. So the same current goes through this resistor and all the rest of the volts are gonna drop. So whatever volts we sort of put in drop across this. So note that the brightness of these lamps is brighter than here. And that's because the voltage is gonna be the same across parallel branches. And so if there's you know, this many volts between uh, the battery, there's that many volts available here, and there's that many volts available across these ends. And so there's the same voltage through each one. 
at the node, the current sort of diverges. So some of the charges look are going through this, but some are sort of going up here through this branch and then powering that. And so the current can be different in different branches of a parallel circuit. If I were to disconnect that branch, and let's maybe give myself a resistor. So note now in this branch, instead of just having an equal sort of filament lamp, I've, I've put some more resistance in this one. So there's more resistance in this branch. And so more charges will tend to go through the path of least resistance, right? So more charges are actually going through this part of the circuit. That's why the light stays brighter here. This second loop where the charges get to this node, they, some of them go this way through the resistor and then through this resistor and the filament lamp, and then they meet back up over here. Because this path has more resistance than this path, less charges flow through. So the current here is going to be less than the current here. Could I measure that? Sure. What's the current right here? 0.45 amp. What's the current here? 0.9 amp, right? So by having more resistance, less charge flows through. And remember how we calculate the voltage. Um, the voltage is the same across each of these, but the current could be different. And we can also measure the voltage. Now you have to measure the voltage across, right? So we could look at what is the voltage across my battery. I get nine volts. What's the voltage across my filament lamp? Also nine volts. What's the voltage across this filament lamp? Only four and a half, because remember, I have another resistor here, which also has four and a half volts, right? So the voltage drops across this branch equal the total voltage for that parallel branch. You see that with circuit symbols, okay? We've got this loop through the filament lamp. We've got this loop through a filament lamp and a resistor, right? And another key law to emphasize would be Kirchhoff's first law which says that all the charges that flow into a point like this node flow out of it. So some of the charges flow this way, some of the charges flow this way, but less of them, right? As we saw with our ammeter, our current, right? So less charges are flowing here than here. But they all meet back up over here again. So we see the sum of the current, 1.35 amps, those are the charges that are being energized through the battery. These 1.35 amps, split up at this node so that 0.9 are going this way and 0.45 are going this way. And you can really kind of show Kirchhoff's first law, you know, with, with quantitative uh, simulated data that we're collecting here. So Kirchhoff's first law says that the sum of the current going into a point or a node or a junction are equal to the sum of the current coming out of that point. So if 1.35 charges go in, then 1.35 equals 0.9 plus 0.45, all right? So we're adding those back up over here and that's why all 1.35 amps go back to the battery. If I were to use this to take a look at my uh, theory circuit, here I could see that the current is 0.45 here, 0.45 here, 0.45 everywhere. The current is the same in a series circuit because you're only giving the electrons one path to flow through. We'd find that the voltage uh, EMF for, for our battery is nine volts, but the potential difference, the voltage drop across each resistor is four and a half. And so there's four and a half volt drop and our other four and a half volt drop. Right. The negative there is just because I, I wired it sort of positive and negative. So if you want, there's the positive 4.5. We always have to measure the voltage across a component. So we, we touch the, the leads to the nodes on either side of the device that we're measuring the voltage across. But we measure the current through a part of the circuit. So we literally have to sort of break the circuit open and then put our ammeter in there. And so this is just sort of a convenient way to, to imagine doing that, but we'd, we'd literally have to, like with a multimeter, you'd have to break the circuit open and then hook up, you know, each of your leads there so that the charges actually flow through your ammeter and then back to the circuit. Here they're just sort of 
showing that in, in a little bit more convenient way to, to select. All right, so the wire resistivity, this would just sort of increase um, how much resistivity there is in the wire. And you saw the effect of what that did sort of to the voltage there, but it drops it and it drops the current. So just sort of more resistivity in the wire. And as I mentioned, um, there's a whole separate simulation on resistivity, but the way that it relates to resistance is that resistance is equal to resistivity times the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area. So higher resistivity, if you're not changing the length or the area of the wire, the resistance is gonna go up. And that's why we saw um, the changes that we did if we toggle the wire resistivity greater. There's gonna be more resistance there and you're seeing those decrease. All right, so have all the fun in the world exploring circuitry with this simulation, keeping in mind Kirchhoff's laws and all the important learning objectives.